So when it comes to the mysterious world of the Akashic Records, um, most of us are, are confronted, or should I say, most of us find our information in ancient texts or in uh, spiritual teachings, right? And um, what I found, especially in the spiritual teachings and the ancient texts is um, the indigenous and the natives, especially whether they're African tribes or the Asian tribes, I found them all doing something that was similar. And that was describing the Akashic records in somewhat of a cosmic library. And one thing that they all had in common, as well as with the ancient texts that I found, was that these Akashic records have, um, they have um, vast possibilities. So they're talking about time differently. They're using different matrices to measure things, you know, and they keep on describing it in a form of language or pictures or patterns that take you through a very deep doorway of like, uh, like infinite possibilities, infinite knowledge and wisdom, you know? So you can understand why today we have a special sister, Maya, today to help us demystify this really deep, you know, information. And, you know, we're going to do a deep dive today. And I think we'll get a little bit smarter when it comes to the Akashic Records. Hello, Maya. Welcome. And how are you? Hello, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Blessings and infinite love to you way over there in the Danish lands, correct? Yes, in Scandinavia, wow. in the Nordics, yes, in wow. Danish land, in the Viking land. <laughs> That's amazing, how beautiful. Oh, I love that, sending love, sending love. I'm great, I'm well, thank you for having me. Yes. So Meyer, uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And um, I want to remind all of our listeners that Meyer's information and her work and everything she's doing is going to be in the description. So please, 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 please make sure to um, check in and find out what she's all about. Because like all our shows, we do this because we have a lot of smart women who have pages long, <laughs> okay? So we would do a show just describing their achievements and their work and all that good stuff. So we're doing you a justice actually by uh, diving right deep into today's share. So I want us to start by, um, I think Maya, let's just start, you know, right at the beginning because, um, yeah, I think let's just start with what is the Akashic record and um, why is it significant? So the Akashic records are um, the records of your lives. Every life you have ever lived, every possibility that you could have lived is all in this wonderful place called the Akashic Records. Um, there's also a place called the Hall of Records that I've been to, which I believe is separate. And that is like everybody else's stories are there. But each person has their own Akashic Records that they um, can access. And so basically, say for instance, your mother was going to name you Nancy um, first, but then she changed her mind. If you go to the Akashic Records, there's going to be a book there that says Nancy. <laughs> and if you open it up, you can see a, that Nancy actually had a life and lived this whole life. And so when you go to the Akashic Records, you can tap into all these possibilities that you have ever lived and have lived. And it is so fascinating. Everybody's Akashic Records looks different as well. Wow. And you know what you said got me thinking about what I was reading relative to the African cultures. I was actually looking at the Kenyan context of the Akashic Records and it said something that, you know, you know, sparked you said something that sparked my memory on that. And they described the Akashic record as the record of the vibrational souls of our personal life, past, present, and future. Exactly. And I was like, okay, vibrational soul. That's like a big powerhouse. Like, what does that mean? What does that even <laughs> well, mean? Exactly. Please take it away. <laughs> it's just a fractal of you is all it is. So you are the hand, and then there's all these different versions of you that are experiencing life. And this is your soul, and your soul is connected to all of them. And so 
we are living multidimensional lives simultaneously. And so it's fascinating um, when you access them. So I've taken many people to different Akashic records and I can tell you how they've all looked different and what their experiences were briefly, if you want to know, <laughs> but we'll save yeah, that for me. I think, I yeah. Think, yeah, yeah, I, we, we would like to know briefly what it would be like, you know, because it, it will help us paint a picture as to what, you know, a lot of these things are described, like I said, in ancient texts, spiritual texts, it's theoretical unless we're able to paint a picture of what is actually happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think this is actually really good. Yeah, tell us. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. The first time I've got to visit an Akashic Records, it was for a 19-year-old girl. And her Akashic Records was in the middle of a forest, and it was a brick building. It was just a brick building. And so she walked into the brick building and she had these books. There were books on the shelves. And um, hold on, I'm mixing her up with her sister. <laughs> I did a whole family. I did a whole family. Anyways, I can't get yeah. to specifics. So let me just tell you. So there was a brick yeah. building and um, there was a book. Yes, this was her sister. Um, and so the book had her, the name that her mother was going to name her. And so I took her into that life to see uh, what that would be like. Um, and then she got to see different, we pulled out different books. I also asked her to um, pull out a book that is most relevant to her now. Like, is there something that you need to know about this life that's coming from another life? And then the book will magically appear to her in her hand and then she can look at it. Um, another girl... Um, went into um, a crystal. It was like a crystal castle and it was a library and that was her Akashic Records. It was like a, a crystal place. And um, I think it was just light of energy. I can't, it was like one of my second sessions ever. I was starting to listen to that. I should have listened to the Akashic Records part, but um, that hers was a crystal, crystal library. Mm -hmm. um, another girl went into um, a, a space that it was like the universe, but it had mm -hmm. these paper flying dog dragons. They look like the Chinese dragons. And there mm -hmm. was just, they were side by side and there was tons of them. And they were just moving, like they were jumping through time and space. And so, um, she wanted, she, she had called me that morning. She was very suicidal. And I said, you know what, let's not go there. Let's go into your Akashic records and find out what is going on. Mm -hmm. So we went into her Akashic records and the person that she was like having problems with, I said, well, let's see what those three lives would have looked like. You know, if there was three different lives she had with this person. And mm -hmm. so she jumped from one dragon and uh -huh. jump, seeing her little body like jump to another dragon and went into this paper dragon and then went into that life. Um, I've had people read their stories in the books. You could just read it. I've had uh -huh. one lady walk on the beach and um, I said, w wherever your Akashic Records is, let's go to it. And she saw herself walking on a beach and there was like a, a gray, uh, not a gray, a straw hut. And so when she entered the hut, there was pictures on the wall that were sunsets, different beach sunsets, and they were all different and beautiful. So I said, she had lost a daughter that um, at birth and she never got to grieve and it, she had been through her whole life and was just holding this inside. So I said, let's find an, an Akashic record. Let's go through your Akashic records and find a life where she lived. And so she, I said, Where, wherever it is, this, the picture is going to just you know, draw you to it. And so she's like, oh, I think I found it. And so she went into that picture. She, she saw herself going into the picture and her daughter was right there and she couldn't believe it. She was like, I think that's her. I said, ask her. She said, yes, mommy, it's me. And her daughter had died at birth. And so she never got to see this child. The child was like seven years old. And she was like, I can't believe that's her. I said, it is her, go hug her. So she got to hug her. She got, she, let me tell you, her story is crazy. She went on a rainbow roller coaster with on a magic carpet with her whole family. It was beautiful. So I can take people into different, different um, lives and then they can journey and see what that particular life was about. So the Akashic Records, there is no one particular way Akashic Records are. Everybody has their own way of who they are. So, you know, your Akashic Records could look like an ancient 
building with the scrolls, you know, it could be anything. Maya, yeah. you've opened a huge Pandora's box and we're gonna do a <laughs> deep dive. We're gonna dive right in. Because as you were talking, you mentioned the crystals, and the first thing that came to me is the work, what you know, the work done by archaeologists and geologists. And I got to thinking that, hold on a minute, you said there is not just one way and not just one thing. And I was thinking, I could be wrong, you're the one you help us demystify this, but I want you to tell me your perspective on the Akashic record of the rocks, of the crystals, of the bones, of the the water and the oceans, because you talked about the crystal. And I was thinking as well, you know, they use the bones to carbon date. You know, they say, oh, these bones are, you know, thousands, millions, billions of years. And to me, those are records, right? And then also the trees, you know, we have the ridges of the trees. Uh, you opened this box. I don't know what your perspective is on this, but I'm now curious whether the Akashic records is much more than just our soul vibration human perspective but whether it goes farther into the akashic records of the bones the rocks the crystals the skulls i don't know the meteorites because you've gone out there as well right mm -hmm. oh yes <laughs> <And the asteroids>. <laughs> <laughs> so um i have spoken with uh trees uh tree people in my sessions um so the trees, from what I know about the trees and how they hold information, um, each tree is alive. And the leaves are kind of like, the leaves are tricky because it's kind of, one, and one aspect is kind of like hair, but when the leaves fall, it's like little children. And when the leaves are playing and running, they're like little children running and playing. So it's, it's, it's interesting how that works. Um, but basically what the trees told me is that they they are connected to us we are them they feel us and they they feel and hold everything that we experience so um it's implanted it is imprinted into the tree so that's why it's always good to send love to the trees you know because you're healing the trees um sadness and things like that i i don't know about bones i know that if you know if you that the trees are very ancient and uh in the beginning of earth the trees were i mean enormous i mean as big as mountains they were gigantic the trees that we have now are like little shrubs compared to what they were um the trees are very uh healing for me they it's what I go to. When I do a healing with someone, I go to the tree and I put my third eye to it. I release it into the tree. The tree takes it into the roots, into the ground, uh, cleans it, sends the energy back out. I don't really know about the tree's Akashic records per se. I've spoken to trees and asked them about their lives and their experiences. And I do know this. Each tree that is here has a physical body on another planet, on a tree planet. They have bodies, like physical bodies. And if you look at the Egyptian old hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics with the people were green, they though I was told those are the plant people that that was they were saying those they were connected to the plant people um water in my sessions we've went back into like the beginning of time when earth was organic and natural and the water was different the water had gold in it had gold and it was um because i take people into like mermaid lives and stuff and you know we we i ask questions and so they said that the water had gold in it and it was very powerful and in like almost like electric and uh the crystals itself hold these are also like people these are all they it also has a consciousness each crystal wow. has a consciousness in it and so they can hijack crystals they can take crystals and try to use them for negative but i don't really know how far they'll get with that i haven't really came across that i've heard it but for me personally um the crystals they are here to help cleanse us and 
and they have information we can program them so they have their own records in them each crystal has a record they and if you don't take care of your crystals they'll come for them and send them back to the crystal planet your crystals disappear um the earth it has tons of natural crystals all over it and the one that you see the most is those little white rocks believe it or not those rocks are super powerful those white snow snow quartz yeah the ones you see regardless yes. where you go, on every beach you have the white ones and the black ones as well they're black they're is powerful too are always together the white rocks and the black rocks i noticed yeah. the white rocks are usually on white sand beaches and the black rocks are popular on the black sand beaches mm -hmm. you know? um yes i didn't know that yeah yes and so um so i'm i'm a crystal healer Mm -hmm. I found out and, that I, um, back in Atlantis, I used to uh, work with the fairies and they taught me crystal healing magic. So whenever I have aches and pains and stuff, I grab my crystals and I put it to wherever the pain is and then I cleanse it in the sunlight um, or I put smoke over it and you, and you, you take care of them. Um, they hold information, they do. If you find crystals and if you meditate with them, they will they will take you places they will download information to you you will have um, all kinds of experiences magical experiences um there's this little boy on youtube he's so cute he he picks up the crystals and he's like this one's singing this one's clicking this one's like he can hear the vibrations oh, and the sounds that he has the ability crystal. to do so these children are very special. These children that we have nowadays are more highly advanced than we have ever been because times have changed. And so it is now our time to finally pick up where we left off back in um, the fall of Atlantis. We are actually reliving the rise of Atlantis. So a lot of this information, people are waking up, they're accessing information, they're getting downloads constantly because this we're at a serious pivotal point right here. In, in time so yeah and and you use the knowledge you have um of the akashic records to do your work with past life regression right and i was wondering you know because you know the internet is is a place where you will get all kinds of information and you know before we came on me and maya were talking about how amazing and beautiful the internet is because we have gotten a lot of amazing stuff right so mm -hmm. to our listeners we just want to let you know we are we are we are in agreement that it's how you use this tool that will determine the outcome or what you get from it right so with that i have to clear that because people are like oh the internet yeah we don't need that but right. <laughs> you use the akashic uh, records for your work in past life regression right and mm -hmm. can you share do you mind sharing um the significance of this kind of um work and why you got into it and um why it is even necessary especially in the times that we are in today why is this important yes so let's just say i i got into it because i was experiencing my own stuff in my life um i was trying to cope with trauma, trying to cope with uh, failed marriage. I was trying to cope with all the stuff that we go through as like growing up, you know, and I was just trying to deal with a lot of stuff. And I started stumbling across UFO stuff, you know, I, my mind just started going out there um, into space because I, I was struggling with Earth, you know, um, I had I had a few episodes as a teenager um, where I was trying to, I call it exit this world and um, it didn't work. I, something intervened every time and I was, mm -hmm. I couldn't, I didn't understand why. And so when I was 15 years old, it was the most severe time it happened and I was in a coma for three days and um, there was no, there was no message from God. There was no nothing. It was just dark. And I woke up, I came out of the coma. I was upset. 
because I, I didn't want to live, you know, I didn't want to be here. And I was like, I was trying to get somewhere and I didn't get there and I ended up back here. So I was so upset. This is when I was like 15. Um, and then after that, strangely, I started changing. Like I decided I didn't need to be with my parents anymore. And I divorced my parents. I got, I got um, emancipated. You know, I, I got my, I met this guy who was older than me, 20 years. He was 20. I was 15, 16 or 15. And he became my guardian. It was my boyfriend. And we were going to get married. <laughs> my teachers talked me out of it. I ended up having a baby. I got pregnant at 16. And from that point on, I found something. I was still a little suicidal, but I had found something to love finally. Yeah. And um, so I always say my daughter saved my life. And so I started to look into my future. I started going within. I was like, I got to look into my future. Am I going to be stuck in this, you know, cycle of abuse or am I going to be able to break out of it? And I just meditated in the shower and I didn't realize that the water is an amplifier. So it's very healing and important. And I didn't know what I was doing. So I was just, you know, thinking and I didn't see anybody there. I saw myself with my daughter and just doing my bet the best I could. And I felt, okay, I could be alone raising my child. Well, from that point on, I just got into Christianity. I started going to church. Like I changed my whole life. I was trying to be the best person I could be. And then, um, 19 years old, um, sorry, 18 years old. I had went to church one day and I was like, I need to know if Jesus is real because I need to know about spirituality. I need to know about religion. Like I was so confused. We were Catholic first. It was very dark. Um, I didn't know what was going on. And so, um, this lady came up to me and said, can I pray for you? And so she did. And then she said, I had prayed and asked for like three wishes and she granted all three of my wishes right then and there. So I started feeling good. And then it just took off. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, th this is how it started. You know, I had faith and I just said, okay. And so I put my faith in God and I just started praying. And then, so from 19 to 21, I went through all kinds of ups and downs. Like I was manifesting things into my life. Um, but I was still confused. I had got married, had kids, you know, was an abusive marriage. And then one day I just prayed before I went to bed and I was like, I need to know what to do with my life. Like, I can't stay in this marriage, even though it was what I asked for. I got it, but I, you know, I need more. And I had this prophetic dream. I had this dream that I was in high school going to fashion. And in and, and the dream, I was like, what am I doing here? I was very lucid. So I was lucid dreaming. I was talking like I was, like I had entered my Akashic records, it seemed, because I had went back into time and I had talked to my teachers and they were like, just talking to me, asking me, what have you been up to? And I was telling them I was married, I had kids. And when I woke up, I said, I know what I have to do. And from that minute on, I changed my life again. Like I said, I was going through different stages and I left my husband. <laughs> I was like, I got to leave. So I left my husband. Um, I went on a mission. I said, I'll be back for seven months. And everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. We didn't get back together. Unfortunately, we, had, we ended up splitting up. It was not good. But we remained friends. And then... I started having all these crazy things happen to me. I started having my Claire's come on, all these crazy things. And I didn't know what was going on with me. Nobody told me I was psychic. Nobody told me I was an empath wow. healer. Nobody told me anything. I didn't know what was going on with me. And so um, I didn't tell you, but when I was three years old, I had seen a portal open. And so my whole life, people were telling me I was... Uh, um, possessed by demons but i i had i didn't know this until later so it wasn't until i left my husband i started this journey and then it wasn't until so i was about 27 when that happened it wasn't until i was 33 where i heard jesus speak to me in my ear and i started hearing voices then i started seeing visions i had all these things happen and i still didn't know what was going on with me and then i seen a ufo and so I said, okay, what is happening here? And then I, I stumbled across Dolores Cannon. And Dolores Cannon, I was like, this is it. The clouds opened up. The sun came. I don't know if you know who Dolores Cannon is. Um, I've seen some of her work because, you know, they sh someone shared to me the one where she talks about um, 
the afterlife. Yes. Know? And that's yeah. what I know. That those are what I've seen, but I didn't know this part of how you know I've not done a deep dive into her work, but I yeah. have listened to her perspective on the afterlife and on uh -huh. reincarnation, especially. Yep. So she talks about all of this stuff, the yeah. Kashuk records and all of this stuff. And so I started getting into her and I just I found I found it. I found where I belonged. I, and so I seeked out a lady to do hypnosis for me. And in my hypnosis session, um, she basically accessed my Akashic records through my higher self. And so my higher self was able to give her all the information that I needed, all the answers to my questions. And when I came out of it, I was like amazed. I said, this is it. This this is a game changer. This is what it's all about. I, I can live my life now, you know, like I can finally live my life. And so I started just watching a lot of her work and her videos. And then I came across uh, Aurora, Rising Phoenix Aurora, who was a student of Dolores Cannon, and she took it to the next level. And she started going into other stuff like body scans, psychic surgery and stuff like that. And so um, when I did my session, I realized how profound this was. Like I can access my Akashic records through hypnosis. I can get healing done. I can get answers. I can find out what happened to me when I tried to commit suicide and I was in a coma for three days. I actually got abducted by aliens, the Syrians, and they adjusted my frequency and sent me back because I wasn't spiritual because they said that I have a very important mission here on earth and I can't get out of it that easy that, um, I am here to, it is very important for me to be here on earth at this time and they will not let me leave. And so, so that's how it happened. I was like trying to figure out my own life issues. Like, why do I have toxic relationships? Why did my father uh, physically abuse me? Why did all my relationships, why are they so toxic? It was karma, 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 clearing up karma. And I didn't know, I didn't know any of this. And so this is why I started doing my work because I can help people if they have problems, if they have questions, if they have troubles and triggers of relationships or anything, this work is God sent. I mean, I, I have literally been able to talk to mother God of creation. You know, they say father God. Well, it's actually mother God and then father God, because we all are born from a mother first, but the father did have something. So we have father crystal, father Christ, and Mother Sophia, and I've got to talk to her. I think he's showed up a couple times, but I haven't heard his voice yet. Um, so that's why I do this work because it is so profound. It is next level quantum healing, hypnosis therapy, where you can access anything. I go into dreams. I go into anything you can imagine. Um, and we get the answers for your highest healing for people. So it, you know, it is the next thing and the Akashic records holds everything you want to know and you can go change timelines. So if you don't, if there was something that happened in that life that you want to fix, we could jump in it, fix it, close that timeline, the negative timeline and put you on a positive track. So what I'm doing now is closing down negative timelines in these Akashic records and putting people on a straight positive path which is what's happening in the Ascension. And I just got chills when I said that, but- um, Wow, well, I yeah. got chills when you talked about Mother <laughs> God. <laughs> Cause it's Mother to God. me, oh. and uh, no offense to any of our listeners who believes in something different, but it's common sense, you know? And, and if you don't believe it, you can see how things have played out Mm -hmm. with the you know with the patriarchy running the show you know and um and you know don't get me wrong but i also know that we do have also a very toxic matriarchy out there behind the matriarch and i wouldn't say anymore Imaya probably knows what i'm talking about this a lot the men are not fully responsible for these shenanigans because maya said something very powerful she said we all come through the womb so even the toxic man had to come through a specific womb. And I'll leave that there because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want us to go too far. But listen to what she has said. Rewind it again because she has said something worth <laughs> digging a little bit deeper. And um, as you were describing your journey, Maya, 
I couldn't help um, um, thinking about how you really trusted your intuition. You know, the two things that came up as you were talking through your whole experience and your journey from point A to B to C to D, the two words that came up was intuition and trust. A lot of things you were doing, you trusted yourself to do it. You know, you you followed your intuition. Something is off here. I'm going to do this. This is I saw a lot of um, you know, use of your intuitive gift or abilities and trust. Could you just share your perspective and how you were able to tap into this and push the needle forward? Because a lot of decisions that we make, whether right or wrong, I think are limited by us trusting in our intuition and trusting in our abilities to make sound decisions for ourselves. Well, that is also why I do the work that I do. Because like I tell people, your mind is like a microphone to the universe. So just because you think you have a thought in your head does not necessarily mean that was your thought. And so as a child, um, playing alone a lot, I guess. I, I, as a Gemini child, <laughs> playing alone again, you know, by myself, I, I guess I really went in a lot, you know, I really thought about a lot of things. When I, when I was in first grade, I remember my mom going to a parent teacher conference and the, and I vaguely remember this. I remember sitting in class and my teacher would be teaching and I would get up in front of her and I would teach the kids like i didn't think they understood what she was saying and so the teacher would tell my mom i think she wants to be a teacher but no it wasn't that it's just i didn't think the kids understood the way she was explaining it so i would literally get up and explain ironically my five-year-old does the same thing when people come into her classroom her teacher says she's the first one up she's quick to tell people all about it. And then their teacher's like, well, let's find out why they're here. <laughs> but she's like so quick to be like, you know, explaining things to people. So for me, um, I feel like, like I said, no one tells you when you're psychic. And for me, when I was little, I used to sit in the mirror and I used to love brushing my hair. And I think that's when I, it started because they said I was really curious. See, when the mirrors are portals to other dimensions and I did not know this. So when you're looking in a mirror, they, it's called looking glass technology and they're looking back at you and they're looking through your eyes. So they tap into your eyes and they know all about you, you know? So I didn't know this and I apparently I was curious and I opened up a portal and all I remember was blinking and seeing uh, a big spider. And then I blinked again and everything was red. And that's all I remember. And I freaked out. So from that point on, I was thinking a lot. And before I would go to sleep, I would have, I call them daymares because I wasn't sleeping, but they were nightmares. But I, I would hear my heart beat. And in my mind, I would get a vision that I was inside a house. And every time my heart beat, I was, these boulders would appear and I would get crushed inside this house. So I had to learn how to control my nightmares. And so for years, my, you know, I would sit on my bed as a seven-year-old and I, I would, these nightmares before I would go to sleep, everyone's already knocked out. I'm the only one awake. And I would have to sit there and control this so I wouldn't like and then i would go run in my mom's bed you know but i learned how to go within to control what i would feel and then i would start hallucinating i would see things that weren't there like i would see these ants playing it playing the piano it was like six of them with tuxedos and they were Why? one was the piano <laughs> and you know how wild that is as a, yeah. as a five and three year old and at this time, were you a Catholic family? You were in a Catholic? I was still Catholic, yes. Oh, very my much. goodness. I, I, I'm trying to, you know, connect the, you know, what they would, would think of you or say to you or perceive oh, you as, you know, it must have been really wild, but go on. Yeah, you were seeing the yeah. aunt, seeing the piano. Mm -hmm. They thought I was absolutely crazy. My mom thought I, you know, forever, they thought I was possessed by demons and stuff. You know, I was the first one to switch my religion to Christianity and they all followed me after I did it. Hmm. But um, I just, it was very dark. And in my hypnosis session, they said that. They said it was very dark for you. But um, it wasn't until I was um, 
must have been in my 20s when I was manifesting all kinds of stuff into my life, but I was still manifesting negative stuff and I couldn't figure it out. And so when I left my husband, I actually went on a spiritual journey because I had said, you know, I, I got to go. And so I for seven months, um, I for five I was gone seven months. For five months, I fasted, and I read my Bible for thirteen hours a day. I was I was just had the Bible in my face, and I was praying. I was um, fasting. I didn't do anything. I was like a nun. I was goody two shoes, just work and read the Bible. And can I tell you, I've had so many amazing. It, like when you go on that journey, blessings are just abundant. And so um, everything worked out even better than I thought. It's a long story short. I'll have to tell you another time. But um, that's when I started trusting myself. I got heart discernment. I prayed for heart discernment. And so people have to understand you have regular discernment where you're like, oh, I know that person's lying. But then when you talk to somebody and you connect with somebody and you're like, man, they seem so nice, but I don't know. There's like something there. I don't know, but okay, let me just, and then later you find out they do you wrong or something. Well, I, when I got heart discernment, I learned that if there's a, 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 a little bit of doubt, I don't mess with it. I don't, I don't touch it. Cause that it just means later on, I'm going to find out. And so I started really trusting my intuition. If I, I didn't do anything without praying first. I said, if I don't feel it inside, like if I don't feel it good, like it's something I should be doing, I'm not going to do it. And so I, I would meditate a lot. I would draw, I would spend hours by myself. I would go mm -hmm. to the beach and I would just try to go within and I would, take, you know, wouldn't listen to your regular music or anything like that. And I would just try to go within. And that's when I started hearing voices and I started having visions and I started trusting everything that I was doing. Cause I didn't want to have to go to somebody to get advice. I'm like, I need to trust no. myself. I need to know no. myself. And so, yeah, I feel like as a Gemini, uh, you know, communication and having multiple feeling like there's two of me, mm -hmm. two perspectives. I had to narrow it in. And so now I'm finally at a place where I've done my healing. I've, I'm doing my work. I'm, I know who I am mm -hmm. and I'm teaching others now as well on the path. So if that's in a nutshell, did I cover that? Yeah, pretty you have, you have said a lot of very, very, I don't want to say powerful because people throw those words out all the time, but I think it's very valuable how you have connected to what people would think are foreign. Um, I don't what's the word, you know, areas of spirituality, religion, and belief systems. You have merged them. And I am a true believer that we should never throw the baby out with the bathwater. There is power, immense power in that book you call the Bible. Even more power if you read the missing books. <laughs> you yeah. know, and you know, when people say, um, oh, religion is this and that, and I, I know they have not experienced um the power of the books or something, they have not I don't want to judge because everybody goes through their own journey and discovery, but there is power and i personally maya i have seen you know the church the big hat church wearing ladies move mountains i have seen them move mountains break things heal diseases that they were told you have two days to live and the disease is gone through the power of collective prayer and holding hands like I have seen this. So because I have seen it I know the power and where two or more are gathered I know in the power of that prayer and fasting like you described i know that you just i know what you're saying because i have seen it and yes. um, i also like that you were able to connect to bring this other aspect of reality because we are in different realities and merge it with what we have been taught and the you know the scripture and the word and i think this is very important you know, to our listeners who think oh, religion is trash or oh it's only one way i like that you you take all the knowledge and you merge it and it has, you know, and you said now it has centered you. This is so powerful. I like this because 
it doesn't shut the doors, you know, you, you the door is open to more discovery, you know, and I mm -hmm. hope, you know, our audience will receive it in that way, you know, that it's not just, you know, one way or the other. And um, the way she's described both the journeys, I really hope they receive this in that way, you know, or in their own way, but don't see the divide, you know, of the different, you know, um, I don't know what to call it, different um, paths. And yeah, and perspectives, yeah. And um, you mentioned the mirrors and you mentioned uh, a couple of times that nobody told you you were psychic. You know, in, um, <laughs> in, uh, in many parts of the world, you know, women are burnt because they're called to be, because they're psychic and because they're psychic, they're burnt and told, oh, you're a witch, so we're gonna burn you. And, you know, it happens today to all our listeners, this is happening in 2024 in some countries. Women who are psychic are still being discarded. Um, then there are also a lot of children and um, and I think also grown-ups who don't know they're psychic, Maya. Can mm -hmm. you just walk us through what are some of the signs that someone who is psychic can look out for and explore, you know, and how can they go about it in different environments? You know, yeah. some that are, um, you know, accepting of these abilities and some that are hostile of these abilities. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so it's kind of funny because when I was growing up, I remember my mother had told me that her brother was psychic and that he knew when his mother was going to die, how, when, what, where. And when it happened, um, everybody freaked out and disowned him. Hmm. and they thought he was bad, you know? And so when I was growing up, and then I have another aunt on my dad's side who's a witch, <laughs> and everybody talked about her, you know, oh, she stay away from her, she's a witch. And she was a little scary. She liked to scare people, but she was one of my favorite aunts, you know? Yeah, she, she liked to scare people because it was probably fun for her because she knew yeah. she, she was not dangerous. <laughs> yeah, she knew how to handle the haters back then, let's just say. She was like, ah, was powerful. <laughs> and so uh, she cracked me up. And so I was always fascinated with her, you know, like, wow, it's interesting, you know, and I, I was always fascinated. So when I was growing up, I didn't realize that by me seeing all this stuff, my third eye was open. No one tells you about the third eye. And then you have little kids who talk to imaginary friends. Hmm. They're not just talking to imaginary friends. There's actually energy there that the kid could probably see. So kids can, kids are more psychic than, so you're, you, from a child, you're psychic up until three years old. If you haven't been closed off yet, if you haven't, then it will go in, until you're about, I think eight or nine. If they haven't shut you down yet, it'll still go. It usually shuts down around 12, around puberty. Like by then, you know, people's opinions and spirituality, religion, dogma, uh, superstitions, everything comes in and then it just goes away. Okay, but so if that's you, why they shut you down. Yeah, they shut you down. Like, so for me, because of what I saw and they told me I was possessed, I didn't want to see anything. I didn't mm -hmm. want to see nothing. I was scared of my own shadow. I was like, I, I don't want to see my shadow. And so it wasn't until I, I, I would say, um, It wasn't until I started uh, hearing voices when I realized there was something else going on. I was like, I, I had, did I have visions up in that point? So I didn't have anything else happen to me. Like I said, 12 years old, 13, it got shut off. I was like, you know, trying to get out of this world. And then it, was, it didn't happen again until in my 20s. Um, when I heard the voices mm -hmm. and that was after I had left my husband. So it wasn't until I was an adult. So I feel like people are waking up now in mm -hmm. their twenties. Some are, are a little slow, maybe thirties, forties, but basically, um, if you're a child, if your kid is talking about they're seeing things, your kid is probably psychic. If they can see ghosts and spirits, they're psychic. You, you are psychic when you're born. It just gets shut down. So I teach psychic development 
And so I have a, I, on my website, I have a, a little do it yourself, you know, quick course of just um, the basics. Cause I'm also an ISIS priestess, um, psychic protection and development. So number one, I teach psychic protection and then development. And so basically you have all these clairs, you can hear things. Some people smell things. Some people um, can touch things and they know, you know, for me, it was just hearing things. I would, I heard a voice, like it whispered in my ear and I was like by myself. So there was nobody there. And another time I was blow drying my hair and I heard a whisper in my ear again, but that mm. time it wasn't Jesus. So I had Jesus talk to me or Yeshua. And then I had an entity talk to me. And, and so what happened was, is I had was dating somebody for nine years and I couldn't get rid of this person. I didn't know why. And I was blow drying my hair and I heard, I love this person. And I was like, I don't love this person. Like, where did this come from? And I, and I kept thinking about it. I'm like, well, maybe I need to come to terms with love with, because they want me to, somebody wants me to say that. And I don't want to say that, but maybe I will compromise and say, I love them genuinely, genuine, genuinely, generally speaking, unconditionally, just, you know, I love everybody. You know, it wasn't, I didn't want it to put it like on him. I was like, can I just say that? And, you know, because this entity was attached to me and I didn't, it was controlling me. It was telling me things. It was trying to tell me that I love this person. And I didn't, I didn't love him like that because I knew it was already wrong. And so um, and then I had like visions. I was walking down the street. I blinked my eye and I saw the future. I blinked again. I was on the other side of the street. So people might get visions. They might hear things. They might, uh, hear things in their head that will give them answers. Like I, my psychic abilities are very random. I have different things. I, I, I don't touch things and get answers to it, but I know things. I just know things you know like i i knew when put it like this at the beginning mm-hmm. of 2020 yeah when people were talking about getting um the jabberwocky mm-hmm. I, the first thing i said was i am not getting forced the mm-hmm. v and yeah, yeah. Yeah. and it wasn't even talked about yet no one was even talking about it. it it was it had just started no one even knew that it was coming but when i said that it mm-hmm. caused hell in my family and chaos. And I was like, what? I'm just saying. And they were like, no one's even talking about that. A week later, it was on the news. People were like, oh, we're developing. And I was like, you see? So I just, sometimes I just know things. Um, But what I can tell people is, Mm -hmm. if you want to practice your clairs and practice your psychic abilities and practice opening your build, there are things that you can do. It's what you eat. It's what you put into your body. If you eat processed foods and all this chemicals, it's going to shut you down because all that stuff is designed to calcify your third eye and to shut you down and turn you into a robot. So if you start eating natural, if you start taking your shoes off and walking in nature and detoxing your body, you can feel the ground. You'll start to feel the connection. You start to wake up your natural innate senses and abilities. You know, a baby is born using their psychic abilities they their eyes are you know still shut and they can smell and know where their mommy is and you know um so everybody has it if there is a way that you can develop and work on your abilities and meditation is one of them but before you do anything you must protect yourself in a bubble of love light that is the number one before you do anything when you wake up in the morning you imagine yourself in a bubble of love because if you don't then it's difficult for you to really use your abilities because you know you've gotten all kinds of things attached to you and you, it's you've turned in your body is kind of like i don't want to say like a trash can but it's it's stored all kinds of stuff and you need to release this stuff so you can tap into your abilities and so yeah you know and maya how first of all who are these what are these entities i don't know what to call them what are these uh, who or what is attaching <laughs> to these and how do you know who is who how do you identify because you know 
you know, we, we know about schizophrenics. We know about bipolarism. We know about multiple personality disorder. We know about all these. There's so many names right now. I'm losing track. The list keeps getting longer and longer and longer. And when you started talking about this, these are the first things that popped into my mind. Is she talking about schizophrenics, bipolar, one personality today, another personality tomorrow? You know, are these the attachments? Is this that voice you said? Was it Jesus, not Jesus? Was it the bipolar? You know, you get where I'm going with this? How yeah. do we know who is attaching, which is the correct voice, why they're attaching to specific people and not others? So basically, um, the world that we live in has, mm. has been designed to um, shield us from everything. Right. So we don't we, we think we're just oh, going through our life. But everything that you that has been given to us has been given to us for a reason. And it's not a good reason. When you when a baby is born in a hospital, all of that white um, ness and like every all those lights when the baby is born from darkness into light, you know, yeah, fluorescent it's, light. Yeah. Um, First of all, the soul doesn't enter the body until after the baby leaves. The soul enters the body. So a lot of this stuff in the hospital is programmed already to put fear into the baby. <clears throat> the baby is born. <laughs> they don't want me to say this. Hang on. Wow. Because this is really <laughs> a baby. Mm. A, a baby is the most precious, precious thing. And so when a baby is born, mm -hmm. um, if the doctor is negative, if the people are negative, instantly the baby will get attachments. Um, reptilian, there's, so there's a few things out there. Number one, you have ancient souls that have been here from the beginning of time that cannot leave. They're trapped until we're done with the spiritual war here on earth, which we're living in the last days now, but we still got, we don't, we're running out of time, but we are living in the last days. And so they're scrambling right now. They're scrambling. They're like trying to get as many numbers as they can. So you have ancient souls. They try to uh, get numbers by attaching to people to grab. Yes, because there's an army. There's a spirit. There's a, a positive side, and then there's the negative side. And so the positive side is taking down the negative. It's been happening since the beginning of time, since the beginning of the first son separated from mother and created the multiverse, which created the Akashic records. It's all his fault, but he's in rehab right now. He's been, he's been saved uh, last January. So he's in rehab. So we don't talk about that anymore because it's changing. The, it has changed, but there's a reason why the Euphrates river is dry, drying up. And that's, I'll tell you that later. But so Yes, there was something that had happened. And so um, there was that part, which created the AI, the negative um, alien, the negative aliens, the archons. Okay, so the archons attached to us through electricity. Um, they are very, very dark. They will attach to you. They have never lived a human life, a real life, because they they disconnected themselves from source. So when you plug into the wall and you get your power, you're plugging into a AI, you're plugging into Archon technology, um, Archon intelligence. And so you shield everything that you use because of this, right? Um, and that's a whole nother story. But then you have the rip in time and space Mm -hmm. There's a rip in time and space that happened. And when that happened back in um, Atlantean times, they let in dark entities. Uh, the greys got in from Zeta Reticuli. And so the greys came in and they started doing human experiments back in Atlantis. And then Atlantis fell, right? And then so here we are again, these souls that that have been trapped are still here. So when I do healings on people, I find ancient souls i find grays i find reptilians i find archons i find dra uh, draconians sarconians i find lost souls from regular people that died and 
are stuck in people's bodies. And so your chakras are like elevators. Your body is like a skyscraper, I say. And these, your chakras are like elevators to different dimensions. So if you are lacking in one of your chakras, mm -hmm. you know, your heart space or your solar plexus or whatever, those will open up and different entities will attach to those places and move around throughout your body causing illnesses and try to take you down basically. So what I do is when I find someone, I do a session for them. I do everything with love. That is our superpower. So I do sacred protection. I call in the higher self and we scan the body. We scan up and down and we look everywhere through the body, front and back, side to side, in and out, up and down. And we comb through the body and we find entities and energies and thought forms that have been passed down through ancestral lineage so say you had a great grandmother who was angry at her father and she put a curse on him because she was mad at him so she just maybe verbally put a curse on him that curse will come through the line later on and whoever his soul is connected to he will come through and he will be here to clear that karma. So it could be your son. It could be you, right? And so a lot of times what I do when I find these these uh, instances, what we do is we send light through the entire ancestral lineage. And so I'm able to go to the beginning of time and clear out all those negative attachments and remove them with the archangels and heal your ancestral lineage. So all that negative is removed and moving forward, all your forward descendants won't have any of that in their DNA because everything holds in your DNA. And then so like you, the reptilians and the draconians and the grays, the negative aliens that attach to our bodies that are, we call shapeshifters that are walking around in celebrities, uh, politicians, they are shapeshifters. And so when I find them, um, they know who I am because I work with Archangel Michael. He's my number one Archangel I work with. And so I tell them, do you know who I am? And they say, yes, we've watched your videos. We've been waiting for you. See, they know I can save them. I liberate them. And so one reptilian could be attached to your throat chakra, preventing you from speaking your truth attached to your ears, preventing you from hearing things. So you don't hear your angels. You don't hear your guides attached to your eyes. So only thing you deal with is like toxic stuff. Like they just infest you. Um, and so when I remove them with the archangels, we bring in light into the body and we replace it with light. So we do healing, but these, we, they get to go somewhere to a resort to heal and to positive polarize, because this is how the spiritual war is ending so i come in and i remove all these sometimes they're attached to millions i've had spiritual people who have had millions attached to their body this one girl had like almost a billion reptilians attached to her body because she was a healer so she would be walking around and you know she went to the post office and this guy was sick and coughing and she walked in there and all of a sudden her body absorbed his reptilian she ran outside and threw up which looked like worms or something she said so she's very powerful she's you'll have to talk to her she's got some serious Please. stories i am just i'm <laughs> in awe about everything you're saying because this is a whole different level of healing oh unbelievably and, and the archons because well, it's, it's going it's multi-layered, you know, yeah. and 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 what you're saying it, for those people who might think this is woo stuff, it is the scientific data out there because there is epigenetics. Go and read about epigenetics to start. That's why I can follow what you're saying because I've read on epigenetics, and epigenetics is real. It goes through the mitochondria DNA, and then it's split into the men as well XX, and they're men with mitochondria. You know, people think it's just, I don't want to go into that, but the research is there. And I, and so what you're saying is scientifically proved as well for those mm -hmm. who are thinking it's very far there. No, it's not. But, you know, is this, oh, is this what we are looking at when we're looking at specific people who are more bombarded? than others because the schizophrenics uh, could these possibly be healers or something mm. because 
you know, the no. alcoholics. You know, most they're of not the people, healers. Uh, what happened? I just, I just use as an example, but you know, why these specific people and not others? You know. Well, it could be a multitude of things. It could mm -hmm. be ancestral. Like I said, That's it could be true. something so down true. their mm -hmm. ancestors that attached to them. I have all kinds of clients. Yeah. I have a client that she had a curse put on her from her from her family. They're all in my videos. And um, it was crazy. You know, I'm like, how did you get that? And so we had to go through and remove it. So we get thought forms. Thought forms is from curses, people cursing you, you know, black magic. Um, when you talk bad about somebody, you create black magic. And so if there's enough hate, it will create this thought form, which is like an entity. It's a shadow being. So so when I find when I do people's scan scans or body, if we find we can find entities mm. or attachments or energies in people's body. So if I find energies that is, those are really gnarly. Like they, they really mess with the person, but I can easily come in with my archangels and we just, we pluck it right out. Or I call in the Phoenix, which is the Phoenix fire, which is the most powerful right now tool in healing. And the Phoenix comes in and she burns it right out. And they're like that. I've had a, I've had a girl come to, in one of my sessions, we were, we were doing a session all of a sudden, um, she could like, she had felt attacks. And so I did a session for her. She was like, couldn't move, couldn't talk. Like I was scared for her. I was like, oh my God, are you okay? So through my session, I did healing for her. I took her aboard our spaceship. We have a spaceship. I took her on a med bed. That's a whole nother story. I took her on the med bed and I had Archangel Gabriel come in, which is her boyfriend, her, her husband um, is connected to Archangel Gabriel. So I have another angel, wow. my team. Really so something. I had wow. him wrap her his wings around her. And we started doing healing on her. And then we called in the Phoenix and the Phoenix sent a little tiny Phoenix, a little bird that went in through her body and went in through her blood and was battling all these negative little tiny microcosm entities. And it was so beautiful. Afterwards, at the end, she was she was fine. She was normal. It was in one of my hypnosis sessions, um, and my, I have a crew called uh, the Cosmic Crusaders. I've taken this to another level. And so I have a crew. We're like the real Star Trek. And we have a crystal uh, pleading spaceship where we bring people on board. And we have med beds so we can do healing with the med beds. The med beds scan your body. They can upgrade your DNA. Like, we do miracles and magic. It is beautiful. It is all high vibe, angelic. And I just, I love, I love this level of healing because... You know, people who are schizophrenic, I can actually help them, but I haven't been able to find anyone yet that's willing to try. They they think they can handle that. I'm like, I don't think you're handling it, but I could take it away. So there's this one girl that one of my sessions, she's 15 years old. Her mother contacted me. She used to, uh, she's in the music industry and her boyfriend used to be a well-known musician, uh, ar artist. I don't even know what he was. I don't think he was a musician, but he, you know, a rapper. And he was in the music industry, which he had sent something, some black magic attached something to her. So this girl now is 15 and she's got 27 different things coming in and out of her trying to kill her. And so her, when I, I, when I had heard about this lady, I was on this app called Clubhouse and I, we were in this room talking about exorcisms. And I said, hey, I can do it, but I don't do it like that. I do it with love you know, so I don't hurt the person. And then um, this girl came in, this lady came in, she's like, I'm, I'm on my way to the mental institution right now, taking my daughter because I don't know what to do. And I, I had talked to her briefly. I was like, listen, I know what you're dealing with. I can help you. And I mentioned to her reptilians, attachments, shape-shifting, and I didn't hear from her in, for, until seven months later. Seven months later, she called me. She's like, you know what? I've been meaning to get back to you, but I haven't. I said, where's your daughter? She's like, she's still in the mental institution. I said, you got to be kidding me. She's still there? So I, I said, let me do a session for you. I did a session for her. I found out what it was, what the attachments were. So we were able to do a little bit of work. Um, it was very serious. So I told the mother what she could do to protect her daughter. I said, you have to teach her psychic protection. She has to tell herself, I am love, I am safe, I am protected, and surround yourself with a bubble of love. She didn't know any of this. So um, I told her this. 
and she was able to talk to her daughter while she was in the hospital. She was able to get that to her long enough for one of the altars to disappear. And so she heard it. And then so I did another session for her. The next day I said, you know, I feel like we need to do another session because I think we need more answers. I don't feel comfortable with your daughter being in there. And so I did a session with her again. I asked her higher self, like, what do we do? They said, get her out of there. She's going to be fine now. You have, you've already told her what she has to do. But I'm thinking, do they know this is a serious case? They're, they're telling me, oh, you got it, Maya. You know, it's okay. I'm like, oh, this is, this is one of my first serious cases. Um, not really, but this is like for a kid, a surrogate, right? And then so she comes home, I meet the girl, I talk to her, I tell her for a whole week, her mother calls me as soon as the sun goes down, because as soon as the sun goes down, she says, they, they start, the darkness starts when the sun goes down, they come out. And so they were literally trying to kill her while I was on the phone with her mother. They had, she was, she disappeared. I said, where's your daughter? She's like, she's in the bathroom. The doors open. We looked, she was on the phone. She showed me the girl's head was in the toilet and she was banging on the wall. Her mother couldn't hear her. And so she went in there, grabbed her head out of the toilet. And the girl was so mad. I was like, yeah, you're lucky. It was number one. They, they were cruel. They, she was like, I didn't even flush the toilet. I'm so mad. Right. And I was like, girl, you have to shield yourself. So I, so I worked with her every day and it has been over a year now. I have to say she's only been hospitalized once because she wasn't shielding. And it, I think it was like, it's been over a year. Wait, it's gotta be a couple years now. I don't even know, but she's living her best life. She has not been in a mental institution. She has not had things taken over her. A couple of times she said, she's like, she's out for days. She said, mom, I just came back. She was like, I thought I was dealing with you. Her mother had no idea what was going on. She said, my daughter's personality is changing. She's doing crazy stuff. It's because there was 20. I said, I need you to write a list and find out who they are. So for a whole day, she was writing them out. She got 27 different altars people i haven't had a chance to deal with them yet but she's keeping them at bay or whatever they told me i need to be in person for her and i need more than one person so i'm trying to teach her mother this but i found out that her mother was actually my mother in atlantis who is isis so you see there's a reason why we all come back together and um she's one of my favorite stories because i'm still working with her and she's now living her best life and Oh, it has been quite the journey, can I tell you? But yeah, I think that was kind of a nutshell. So yeah, you know, I've had all these weird cases. So that is schizophrenia. crazy. Yeah. And and imagine people who don't know, because it also makes me, you know, think about people who say, Oh, you know, I hear, you know, the people who say I had this voice, I got this message, you know, they call themselves prophetic. <laughs> You know, is it prophetic? I don't know. I just yeah. thought about it because we're talking about voices, you know, which yeah. voice is which one? You know, is it prophetic? You know, these dark messages about this is happening and that, is it really prophetic? You know, uh, you see, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. They can manifest, if they want to implant a negative timeline, for instance, the, the book of Revelations and the, okay, so I talked to Jesus a lot, Yeshua, mm -hmm. and he said, the Bible was bait for the Romans. It's still powerful, but they've taken a lot out of it. But yes, so, a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he said to me, um, he said that um, that if a person is not shielded and protected, in first of all, you have to shield yourself. You're going to get all kinds of voices, and you know, and they're going to tell you negative things that grays uh will tell you to you know to go kill people and to do things like that you know reptilians are very toxic they will want you to hurt people so uh, when you see people acting out i guarantee you those are aliens those are negative alien attachments now if a person has just like a regular ghost like you know bobby died and now bobby's attached to me um, they will cause physical damage in their body, you know, like um, aches and pains and things like that. But aliens, they cause like tumors. They cause bad, bad stuff. And so when I deal with people, I ask them, you know, what's your medical conditions? I, I know 
what's alien and what's this and what's that. Like diabetes is easy. Diet. You got. I, I've helped people clear diabetes. You know. Um, and think about how people go f so long with that stuff. My first husband died from diabetes because he didn't want to take care of his body. But you can cure yourself from a lot of these things. So there's certain things that um, are from regular lost souls. And then there's certain things that are aliens. And the aliens are the most, they cause the most harm to a person's body. I hope I didn't go off on tangent on that no, one. No, you did not. Oh my God, this is so important. No, you did not. Not for one <laughs> second. Because... It, to me, well, it's all connected because we were talking about the Akashic records. We're talking about past life and all these things are, because these are the records. And yeah. what you're going through is now recorded in your records. Yeah. Remember you talked about Nancy and then her mother calls her Mary or something else. And yeah. all those books are recorded in different uh, timelines. So when I'm listening to this, my head is going like this because if you have 27 or 10 personalities, you have Nancy, Jack, John, imagine how your record is expanding. And those are also forming different timelines, right? I mean, it's getting very complicated, I know, but <laughs> it's quite so, important to know this, right? Well, for the girl that had the 20, so like schizophrenia, and mm -hmm. people like that, like, like the girl, or other things. Well, see, they tried to say they thought she had schizophrenia, but it doesn't line up with the DID stuff. Cause so that's why she, her mother came to me because I said, Hey, this is another level. Like this is another level stuff. So schizophrenia and people who have voices that talk to them, those are, those are a mixture of things. Those are lost souls. Those could be, well, for her, I want to say they were all people. I don't know if any of them were aliens, like reptilians or anything. I don't know. But I think they were all just people. But so who are these people? people? Like people who died and couldn't make it to the light. So people who had oh, died wow. tragic. Okay, lost people. souls. Yeah. Hmm. So those are lost souls. So people who commit suicide, people who you know, um, get killed, people, they they don't die properly. So we have six exit points. We can exit our life, six, we have six options. And sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't happen. So near-death experiences, things like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times um, these entities attach to you according to your vibration. So if you're having a bad day or whatever, your heart broke, you will get these things that will attach to you. Um, I have met two people that have had grays, gray aliens attached to them for heartbreak. And I was like, wow, that's serious heartbreak. Like you really attacked something dark. So a heart broken heart is very serious that so you have to heal your broken heart. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot, but lost souls are just basically people who've died who can't cross over. And so I come along and I cross them over with Archangel Michael or, whoever decides to help me, Ascended Masters. And I work with all the Ascended Masters. There's, I work with Freya. I work with all the Ascended Masters, you know. So it doesn't matter what your belief is. Like if I work with people who are Hindu, you know, mm -hmm. they want to work with Shiva or whatever. We, we call, I love Ganesh. So I call in Ganesh um, or whoever they want to work with. So, you know, it depends on the person and what they're around. But you can see what from a person, if a person is acting out really naughty, like a kid, they're being mm -hmm. really mean and really bad, they could have a reptilian attachment to them. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, what you want to do is always try to imagine light coming in and over the person or surrounding them with bubbles of love. Um, you just want to send positive energy into that person. Into, my my husband and my my daughter used to fight a lot as a baby. Mm -hmm. I said, "What's going on here?" They told me it's they're aliens. They they don't like each other. I said, "Now I got aliens in my house." They're like, "Yeah, we need to get rid of them." So they plucked them out. My husband had two. My daughter had one that was attached to her. It would it, it wouldn't attach to her fully because I I protect her, but it was like like on a kite 
on a string on her. And so it was up here, but it was still holding on to her, making her like lash out and be mad. And so now she's, they're fine. But I was like, freaked out. I was like, oh my God. They said, yeah, be careful what you say because they're listening. And so I was like, oh my God. I'm it's not wild because now I'm thinking about the workplace. I'm thinking about family feuds because, you know, you talked about great, great grandfather, some relative over there committed suicide a hundred years ago. And these are all cords. It just looks like a huge, big, um, it's wild. You know, I think we should have learned all this in school because oh. this is a very, very complex, um, you know, you know, if you think about this, it's really, it's really deep. It's really, really deep because you will now understand family feuds. They don't even know why they're arguing. Most couples will tell you, I don't even know why we fight. I Thank hear you. this all the time. I'm telling you, Maya, you know, when people will call me and say, hey, Faith, I don't even know why we fight. I'm like, but <laughs> think, they really have to think real hard. And they're yeah. like, I think it was the conflicts. But it was a really heated. I'm like, seriously? She's like, yeah, I don't know why he get, he, he gets on me because of the conflicts. Triggered. Something triggered <laughs> and now him. It's making oh. sense because it is not them. When you said about your husband and your daughter, it's not them. They mm -hmm. love each other. They are fine, but it's external. Oh my goodness. Oh, he didn't what like him that either. He was like, what? And he's not on he is not with me on this just so everyone knows like my husband is my twin flame and you know we're but he is he is the other side of the coin for this he he, he thinks i'm completely crazy um but he sees the work that i do and he sees that it helps so he's just he he doesn't know what to think of it. <laughs> and plus yeah. i tell him he, we found out that i'm connect i'm also connected to mary magdalene and he's also connected to yeshua and so yesterday he finally the lights came open and he said he was listening to some um egyptian um information about the bible and they said he found it where they said Yeshua had big gray eyes and um, reddish um, auburn hair. And I said, uh, that's you, you know, let me show you. I have to show you. This was him uh, before, like, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, but I, I always see. tease him. I'm like, you're like the white Jesus on, on the wall. And he's like, Jesus <laughs> wasn't white. Jesus was Ethiopian. And I was like, well, maybe his dad was, maybe Joseph was Ethiopian, but he looked like his mother <laughs> and so he would get mad but i'm like you look just like him honey and so we found out there's that so much controversy is. not controversy there's so much um information about yashua mm -hmm. Yahashua, jesus and you know there's now the you know russia just unleashed all their information about you know black jesus and you know <laughs> the archives and everyone's mad and you know uh -huh. <laughs> and people are really uncomfortable and i'm thinking to myself like if you got miracles does it matter you know but you know we this is the thing like the things you're discussing are so important <laughs> that you know you have to move past um, many things you know because this is real Ugh. conflicts fights should not be happening and no one understands that people are going their separate ways because they just cannot see you know exactly yeah and they don't know what's happening there is nothing maya i'm sure you've had this even when you watch um the legal shows you know when case people are in court and these are real life cases right and they're asked you know how did you kill your wife and drown your five children they say i, I don't know how i did it i don't have recollection that's what it is that's this exactly is crazy. what this is some very serious stuff you know so i i just commend you for your work and i and the tolerance you know I, <laughs> your bravery I, and i have to add this too i have to add this yes please mm -hmm. i'm seeing a lot of my black people waking mm -hmm. up and realizing their m abilities like people have real telepathic telekinesis like magical abilities and, and i think it's so beautiful and then i have my my white family my white people right my mm -hmm. i got black my white my asian my mexican you know all, every all culture right yeah. mm -hmm. and so one thing that i have found out is that we 
so you have <laughs> the Asians, the indigenous, the Hindu, um, you know, the Africans. We are all the same people, actually. We're all the same people. And so my husband is, is white. He's Jewish. Mm -hmm. He's a white Jew. I, he likes to say, <laughs> hope you don't kill me for that. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, he even says like, he's trying to figure out where his people came from. And mm -hmm. so I did a session with one of my friends um, who's Irish and English. And he said, he found out that Europeans or some white people came from Jupiter. And so I was like, Jupiter? How crazy. And mm -hmm. Jupiter looks like Earth. It's it's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, you know, we find out all these different things. And then we find out that, um, you know, we're here to basically, the only reason why we're here is to help Earth ascend. And so everything that we argue and fight about, white, black, you know, it doesn't matter. None of it matters because there's good and bad in everything. There's in, you know, there's black folks that do black on black crime. There's white people that do white on white crime, you know? And so when I, I when I tell yeah, my husband, the other way around, filled with, up. Mm -hmm. they're filled with reptilians. That's all it is. So we have to send love out to everybody constantly. So we say at 111 every day, we send love to the earth. And at least for four to 13 minutes, however long you can do it. And this will help vibrate and through time and space. And it will help everybody here on earth. So when you put a blast of love, the negative entities, they jump for a minute. You know, they're like, whoa, what mm -hmm. was that? They, they can't handle it. It burns them. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's our superpower. So when you see, when I see people fighting in the streets, I send love to them. I send mm -hmm. love and I'll, I'll yell out. Can we just love each other? Like, I thought this guy was going to shoot this guy one time. They were fighting oh, in wow. like, a mm -hmm. street. And I'm like, I don't need bullets flying. So I oh, I rolled down my window and I was like, can we just love each other? You know? Mm -hmm. And the, the guy that was fighting with the guy threw his hand up, put it down, turned around, and walked away. And they were getting, the guy looked like he was going to shoot the guy. And he ended wow. up turning around it's and like walked away. I was like the kryptonite, you know, it's a Superman, you know, it just repels. Yeah. So I teach my daughter this. I'm like, baby, you got to send love out to people. You have, if, there, if you see a kid in class that's arguing and fighting, he's mad, just send him love because it's our superpower. It will help push anything negative away, even if it's for a split second so they can breathe. But yeah, um, I like to go on tangents, as you can see, but no, 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 I absolutely <laughs> love it. You know, in um, no, the tangents are really good because I think also I, some people might think it's a tangent, but I think my <laughs> background, you know, um, you know, when you know when you look at the African context, people always say, "Oh, they're always late and whatever, whatever." And if you go to a party in, in, on the continent of Africa, they don't apologize for being late; they just show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know, and go on about stuff. And so I think I have a whole different tolerance. And also, when you start with a specific topic and people go completely off, people will, and, and if that one person says, no, I'll get back, or people will get upset because they say, no, you need to let either the spirit talk or the ancestors talk. That's what yeah. they say, no, 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 it's the ancestors talk. No, it's the spirit talking. That's the message was very urgent that they, it had to interfere with what we thought was important. And we had to listen to what we needed to listen to at this particular point in time. So we, we if you listen to conversations in these, in an African setting, um, it, it looks like a whole big tangent, but everyone is very chill and nobody is looking like, oh my God, no, everyone is chill because they know that this is profound coming from, you know, from, you know, a very sacred place, you know, so yeah. it's, it's, it's very, it's very okay. And it's very well received. And, um, and our listeners, you know, you will realize when you um, listen to <laughs> what you might think is a tangent, you will be thankful in maybe a day or two or a year or two or three that she mentioned the things she mentioned, because sometimes you have to catch up 
to the message. And I'm saying this, Maya, because I've had people, you know, talk to me five years later and say, oh my God, you know, I was listening to this and I get it now. You know, I'm like, okay, that message was for you. At this time, five years later is when you're ready to receive it, you know? So it's beautiful, exactly how you said it. It is in perfect order and in perfect synchronicity. And um, so we are very thankful. And um, I know our listeners will be grateful because again, people, you have to remember, um, it takes a special kind of a brave person to share the story that she shared. Um, it's not an easy thing to talk about things that were not so nice that happened to you as a child because you have to relieve these moments. And when someone shares these things, please be gracious and understanding. And, you know, I was, you know, Maya, we had a show with Sherry who was groomed as a young girl and, you know, and she shared her whole story and it was very, very painful for me to listen because even as you're talking, it was tough for me to listen because I'm seeing a grown woman, healed woman, but I know what was happening was to a three-year-old. So people forget we're watching a grown woman, Maya, you know, you're very, you know, you're, you're healed and you're really vibrant and energetic and, you know, you have all this wisdom, but it was a small, young, three-year-old scared girl going through these things. And that's what you're sharing. So the inner child story is not <laughs> one to be taken lightly. So yeah. I thank you once again for your bravery and for your commitment to, you know, you know, helping you know, this earth, you know, move forward, pushing the needle and also for, you know, your work in helping people understand different aspects of healing, the possibilities and the, the what do you call it, um, the availability, you know, because sometimes people don't know this resource and this tool is available, mm -hmm. you know, for my healing, you know, for my, you know, for, exactly. for my, you know, whatever, enlightenment, education, you know, for my home, for my family, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, spiritual yeah. Growth. <laughs> what's that? The spiritual growth, I call it. It's yeah. spiritual growth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that for the spiritual growth. Yeah. So I'll let you have the last word. If there's anything that we missed out that you want to share and, um, I hope you will come back. You have a wealth of knowledge. My book here is filled with, <laughs> with a, a lot of, I think these are, you know, you could write a lot of books, you know? <laughs> oh, I know. I trust me. I was watching, I was listening to one of your podcasts with uh, Michael, M Michael Mitchell Levy. Mitchell oh, the uh -huh guy. Oh, he was so cool. Yeah, yes. So much fun. Yes. And I was like, I need to get connect with this guy. And so I actually had booked something with him the other night, but I, I couldn't make it because I had another meeting that came up. And so I'm like, I got to get on with this guy because he inspired me um, to write my stories because I have tons of books that are just stacked up. I can see them already. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I think they will be really good. Aha guy, he was so he has a very good energy and yeah. you can tell he's a he's he's a very good um teacher, you mm -hmm. know. In, in, you know, he, he can inspire, but we've had yeah, a lot of amazing people. Yeah, I think you would also like um um the whole time you were talking, you were mirroring, uh, not mirroring because you're your own self person, but you would also like um Malens. Um mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, she's she said something to me that just sits with me, you know. She said that um in order to heal this world, because you're doing work to heal the earth, and you talked about you know sending you know all this healing energy through the roots and the light and covering the protection, but she said something very profound to me. She said, We can the only way we heal this earth is by healing the womb. Because everything comes through the womb. Yes. You know, and and when you said something almost similar, and I thought you would like, uh, you know, her perspectives on a lot of things. She does a lot of womb healing, but she's not just healing the womb. She understands the connect interconnectedness of the womb with nature, with mother nature, with with the children, with the cells, with the DNA and everything. Yeah, it's yes. really interesting. Yeah, you would yeah. like her as well. 
Yeah, but you'd like many of them. I could go on and yes. on. <laughs> I'll have to check her out. But yes, I would like to say one last yes. thing. I would like to leave people with um, a psychic protection prayer that that I say and okay. Archangel Michael and my Archangel okay. say that is it is very useful. And this is what I taught the girl, the teenage girl, and this is what she does every day. So I'll just end it with this. So okay. what I do is we're supposed to do this twice a day dawn and dusk right before the sun comes up and right before the sun goes down those that twilight time is very powerful energy so i was told during that time to shield and protect yourself twice a day and this is what i do i rub my hands together until you get a little warmth a little heat and then you pull your hands apart just a little bit till you feel a ball and you pull it out and you surround yourself imagine yourself in a bubble of love like when little kids blow bubbles and imagine yourself in one of those little bubbles and you're you're protected and you're invisible to harm so this is what i do so i do this mm -hmm. and i do this three times i make a pyramid a triangle and then i pull in i imagine pulling in the sunlight down mm -hmm. through my chakras and i hold it here and so this is what i i'm going to show you the practice i go okay i call forth my i am source love light from the four sacred directions of the universe to keep me safe and protected and invisible to harm day and night um, mentally physically emotionally and spiritually from negative energies negative entities negative frequencies negative programming and negative technology of uh, and negative people of all creation who wish me harm without harming none and then i say three times three shall it be because uh, and I say Adonai. You can say whatever you want at the end. Amen, whatever. I say Adonai because that's what Yeshua says and Mother Mary and I'm connected to them. So I, I like to say that. But um, if you do this twice a day, shield your home, shield shield yourself first, shield your, your children, your husband, your animals, shield your phone, shield your TV, shield your computer, shield your car, shield. These things are alive so you have to shield them and protect them from infringements because they get into you many many ways and if you can put yourself in these force field of protection and just try it three days straight and i i if you don't feel something i'll be shocked but if you if i don't do this every morning by the time the sun rises hell will break loose so i always shield and protect everything i and i tell my kids and my husband i'm like you're lucky you know, they'll tell me, oh, I almost did this. Yeah, well, you're lucky because I, I prayed for you. I protect you. Yes. And so it's important to shield, mm -hmm. shield, shield, because right now the energies are coming in strong. Um, the solar eclipse is around the corner. So you want to, they said, double up on your shielding, protect yourself. Take it seriously. Take it seriously because time is running out. We have to wake up remember who you are and say i am a sovereign being i do not consent so thank you for having me on your oh, show this has been wonderful absolutely i will definitely be in touch with you and have you on my podcast as well so i cannot <laughs> wait i would love that it was really nice so many gems and i am thankful and grateful that you came and shared all this beautiful knowledge and your words were really kind and gracious and really, really good. So I am thankful. And um, to all our listeners, this was our smart sister, Maya. And um, her work can be found on sosqht.com. Description section, people, has all her information. So go in there, have a look, you know, um, you know, make a, take a tour, <laughs> you know, be curious, you know, if it, you know, just I'll just leave it up there because all of our smart sisters have a huge bios. So go and see what picks your interest and um, and see where that takes you. Once again, thank you, Maya, and um, have a lovely day to all of our listeners. Thank you for stopping by. Thank and you. Thank you.